Hey guys, welcome to back to the channel. Uh, this is a, a special big talking point uh, that we got here. This weekend we saw a, a red card in the All Black France game. Basically it ended the game as a contest, it ended the series as a contest, and it's been a very controversial co uh, contest in New Zealand. First, let's have a look at where we got to this point. We had a situation last week where there was a horror tackle on one of the French players, which re resulted in a facial uh, fracture. World Rugby kept quiet for a number of days, then released a nonsensical statement that said basically nothing it wasn't worth a sighting it wasn't worth a sanction it wasn't worth anything so we had that go there we, we some of the other cards that we saw there were you know there's no consistency and we've had this discussion before on this channel and that's and that's what i want to touch today let's let's have a look at this red card for the french fullback benjamin Fall. now Beru. he hasn't put a foot wrong so far Unfortunately, I mentioned it before that both players went up at the same time. This time, the chasing French players showed no regard or clear himself from the danger zone. It'll be yellow card minimum. Uh, you're not in a realistic position to contest the ball. No, you're not realistic, and you've hit the player. It's very dangerous. He's landed on his head. I've got a red card. It's no other option. As you can see by the video, both players have got their eyes on the ball. Bowden Barrett goes up higher. He's the guy who, according to the way the rules are reft at the moment, needs to be protected. The player who doesn't have the right to catch the ball, the player on the ground, needs to make sure the player comes down safely. This obviously doesn't happen in this situation. So technically it is a red card. Right? I don't think anyone's doing that, but I think we, there's a bigger issue here about red cards and how they influence games. Of course, the first thing uh, we have to say is that obviously nobody wants to see anybody get injured. We don't want to see Bowden Barrett, such a superb talent, get injured either. And player safety should be always the first concern for everybody. But having said that, though, we've also got to think of a bigger picture now. We're going to look at it, whether it was, obviously the, it wasn't intentional. There's a, a, there's a bit of a, a suggestion of a bit of a nudge by Anton Leonard Brown in, in, in the frame as well. And whether Benjamin Fowl actually, it, well, it, and whether Benjamin Fowl intended to do anything has no consequence because it's the outcome that happens. This is the thing that's got me that World Rugby, which frustrates me. It really frustrates me. We've already seen it with the intercept. We see nowadays any player going for an intercept has to catch the ball. If he doesn't catch the ball, whether he genuinely goes for an intercept or whether it's a deliberate knockdown, it's ruled a deliberate knockdown. We often see yellow cards for this, even though a lot of times it feels very harsh on players. Uh, World Rugby's taken that out of the context. I used to, I hate that because while you want to, you want to penalise negative play, you want to give players who, who set themselves up for the intercept. It's a, a very risky thing to do in rugby. If you want to give them the chance to do that, because it's it adds points and it's a 14 point turnaround. It's a great weapon for a side if you've got somebody who can do it well. Brian Obano was one of the guys who did it exceptionally well for the Springboks. And and you just think how many times there's been yellow cards where you think, geez, that's a bit harsh, guys. Anyway, but back to the, the red card. I think in a bigger contest, we have to worry. We have to think to ourselves, there's got to be something we've got to try and figure out on how to make this an e more even contest. Think of the scenario for a moment. If we're sitting at a World Cup, World Cup final, you've flown halfway across the world, wherever the World Cup's being held, you've paid thousands of dollars for, for a ticket uh, for the showpiece final, and there's a red card in the first minute, which effectively ruins the contest, the biggest contest on rugby's uh, uh, radar at the moment. For what? For one red card. For something that m maybe wasn't intentional, for something that definitely uh, couldn't really be controlled in the, in a split second either, and for something that's really harsh on a player and his team and his country at that stage. So I think we've got to use common sense. I know the New Zealand commentator said it on Saturday at halftime. Common sense is what we should use. Uh, I think uh, my suggestion, I'm not sure how we do this, but there's got to be a way of 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 really, I don't know, making sure that the contest doesn't get ruined for 75, 80 minutes by a red card. Uh, I, I'm thinking that obviously player players safety is a concern, and I understand that. And, and World Rugby has become 
almost paranoid about concussions. If we see some of the, the, the tackling laws that they've done at under 20, it's, it gets a bit ridiculous. And you're going to wonder when they're going to take the physicality out of the game. It's going to get to a point, guys, seriously, we, we, we're not going to go up for high balls anymore. Where players aren't even going to kick high balls anymore because the risk is just too great. And, and you know, we don't want to see that go into rugby. I, I think the contest is great, the up and under contest, the tactical kicking contest is, is, is a good weapon for a team. So we don't want to take that out of rugby, but we need to have some common sense. We have to protect player welfare, but we have to protect the game as well. So to me, a humble suggestion, I'd say let's make it a yellow card uh, with a proviso that if it is serious enough, any incident like that goes to a committee on a Monday who decides if it's a red card offence or not. If it is, there must be a heavy sanction. There must be a, 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 a thought that the player gets punished financially. His team gets punished as well uh, in some or other way. And, and it gets looked at by a team of independent officials who, who look at this. The problem we've had in New Zealand now is where there's been a hell of an outcry. The game has been ruined. The red card's been there. And while it's technically correct, a, a, a panel of three Australians... Uh, who chaired the panel, uh, who were on the panel to, to look at the red card, came back and said it shouldn't have been a red card. So now World Rugby sits there and they've got one set of rules which they're telling match officials to ref, and then when they do ref, then they're saying, well, that shouldn't be a red card. The, there's too much uncertainty, there's too much grey areas here, and I think we should make it quite clear. I think, personally, I think a yellow card would be fine, and then the incident goes on review. Any foul play incident, to be very honest, goes on review, and then afterwards, if it's a red card offence, a yellow card offence, there's sanctions there. Uh, and that's by independent in, uh, committee. Uh, NRL has a, a similar view. If there's any act of foul play, it goes on review, and teams uh, and teams pay a heavy price for that. And we've seen that quite often in NRL as well, even though we don't see it much in this world. I know when I've been touring Australia, you see quite those headlines quite often of players being punished heavily for something they did on the field on the Saturday. Weren't sent off, but they didn't get a yellow card, but they got a heavy sanction on the Monday. So as soon as you do that, you'll start getting players thinking twice about these things. I think also we want to protect the integrity of the game. We want to protect the game as a contest. We want to keep it that we're going to have a 15 against 15. And if it's a 15 against 14, it's not for the whole time. Uh, you know, just have a look at this, uh, this the high card. Remember this one from Leo Zass. There was another one. You, you can't blame the player. He didn't do anything wrong. It's not his fault the other guy fell badly, but he's the guy who gets punished. And that's the way the laws on it. So to be very honest, guys, we need a rethink. We need the laws to be a rethink. We need uh, red cards to be looked at differently. We need to empower refs to actually have some common sense and not to rule it to the letter of the law. We see it, we've seen it in tip tackles. We don't see many tip tackles anymore. Um, I think the refs there was start at red and go down, see what mitigating circumstances there are. But in a case like this, you don't want a situation where you're 15 against 14 for 70 minutes. That pleases nobody. It doesn't please the coach that wins. It doesn't please the coach that loses. And least of all, it doesn't please the fans. Uh, I've heard so many people tell me they switched off the TV on Saturday when that happened. They walked away because the contest was over. Is that really what we want in World Rugby? That's the question World Rugby's got to ask themselves. That's the question we all got to ask ourselves. And we're going to say, that's what we want in World Rugby. We want a contest at the end of the day between two nations that we can see who's stronger. We don't want red cards to ruin it. And I know, listen, if it's a deliberate foul play and there was intention and there were, was, yeah, a play deserves to be sent off, send him off. But surely, in a situation like this, some common sense must prevail. That's it from me. That's my thoughts on the, on, on the red card situation. Tell me what you think. I'd love to know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments, and I'd love to hear your solutions, especially solutions. Let's hope we can come up with some good solutions and we can tell World Rugby that uh, perhaps uh, they can have a look at it a bit differently. Uh, of course, as always, remember there's a subscribe button down below. Leave your comments. I'd love to hear them. I'll answer as many of them as I can, and it'd be great to hear from you guys. Cheers.